Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar, Global Connectedness in the Classroom. Uh, please use the chat area to the right of the video to tell us who you are, where you're from, and your role in education while we wait just a minute to get started. If you have any questions at all during this webinar, please feel free to use that chat area to the right of the live stream. We'll be, I'll be on the back end answering some questions, and then we'll also save questions for our presenters at the end of the webinar as well. An on-demand version of this webinar will be available at the same YouTube link that was sent to you to, to view this link that you're watching right now immediately after the webinar is over. You can visit forward-edge.net forward slash webinars for all of our webinar recordings, and I'll share that link in the chat in just a minute. Feel free to share what you're learning on Twitter with the hashtag FEK12. So let's get started. My name is Katie Seamer, uh, and I am the Director of Curriculum and Technology Integration at Forward Edge. And presenting for us today is Tyler Irwin, and he is one of our amazing Curriculum and Technology Integration Specialists. Uh, again, like I said, we'll be sharing links in that group chat area and answering questions, uh, and that is located to the right of the video screen on the YouTube page, once again. So a little bit about Forward Edge. Um, we are a K-12 technology company. So when I say that, I mean that we do all things technology for schools, uh, including selling hardware, setting up and managing wireless networks, and we even have our own cabling team um, that, that pulls and hangs uh, cables and hangs APs, moves projectors around. Uh, so, so we really can do everything from a technology need uh, that a school may have, we we're able to provide some sort of solution for them. So a little under four years ago, we actually started focusing on the curriculum and technology integration side of things to sort of close that loop. So once uh, teachers and students have technology in their hands, how do they really make the magic happen in the classroom? So everybody on our team comes with an education background and we work with teachers and schools to help them better utilize the technology that's available to them for teaching and learning. So in short, in the CNI department, we call it, we come uh, with education background background, like I mentioned, classroom experience, and we offer visioning and planning services, provide professional development, and serve as on-site integration coaches to schools. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Tyler to get started for us today. Well, thanks a lot, Katie. Uh, I appreciate the, the nice introduction. And we have a really great topic on hand, and so it would be really remiss of us to not start off with this question. You know, why is global collaboration so important in schools, especially for our students? You know, when you think about global collaboration, first of all, you might ask, well, well, what is it? And why is it our responsibility? Well, notice we always like to start off our webinars by featuring some of the ISTE standards. You know, these are globally recognized standards that help us as educators frame our work continue to improve and reach out in ways that extends our practice into areas that we might not have thought about before. And when you look at two in particular, you know, number three, citizen, it's really our job as educators to inspire our students to positively contribute to and participate in the digital world. And, and that includes people from all across the globe that come from all walks of life. And we certainly want to see them grow in the way in which they interact with others in that way. And then number four, a collaborator, not only as us as educators, do we want to set the example in collaborating and sharing resources and always looking for ways to improve our practice. But then are we also imposing that on our students as well? Are, are we bringing them up in a culture of collaboration and really making it the way to share your ideas, to share your resources, and to look at a problem and solve it collectively. So that's one of the reasons why this is so important because these are responsibilities that we have to take seriously as educators. And then for our students, of course, they kind of dovetail on some of the things that I mentioned already, but having them develop as digital citizens and having them collaborate in a global environment where they can broaden their perspective uh, they can get really an idea of what life is like outside of the bubble that they're currently living in. 
and then just work effectively in teams. How important that is, regardless of what walk of life they end up going into after they leave us and graduate. And then when you think about it, ISTE is also listed five ways students benefit from global collaboration. So just notice these five bullet points here and think about some of the intrinsic benefits that come from them. You know, number one, showing students how we're more alike than different. You know, as they begin to collaborate and connect with classrooms outside of the school building that they're currently in, they begin to develop relationships with students and realize they have a lot of similarities. They have similar talents, similar fears, similar feelings. Uh, they have similar goals and aspirations. And that really helps them to appreciate that no matter where you come from, you know, we're all kind of alike and we can connect and, and grow our relationship in ways that are so meaningful and how important that is. And then giving students the opportunity to learn through inquiry. You know, a lot of the tools that we're going to discuss today have our students ask questions. They have our students be presented with a problem and then look for ways to solve it. So when students are given this opportunity to ask experts and other students, you know, how empowered they are then to learn in a meaningful way. And then that really then leads right into allowing our students to be the experts. You see, when they connect with others outside of their classroom walls and they're interchanging questions and they're giving responses back and forth to one another, they're in a way teaching each other. And that's one of the highest levels of learning that there is. And it empowers them to feel like they are an expert. It builds their confidence and it really helps them retain the knowledge that they're taking in. And then, of course, introducing students to new careers, uh, being able to ex expose them to experts in all sorts of career fields, ones that we might not very commonly see in the area that we're from or in the state we're in or even in the country that we're in. And so letting them find things that they're passionate about and see them in action and then maybe think to themselves, you know what? I could see myself doing that in the future. And then the one I really like the best is, is teaching empathy. And this is so important, especially with some of the negatives that maybe this digital world, this digital environment that is around us brings. Uh, oftentimes we feel like social media and those sorts of things enhance bullying. It enhances negativity. But you see, when we utilize some of these tools and some of these strategies to enhance global collaboration in our class, we are teaching our students empathy. We're allowing them to build relationships with other students, see their struggles, see their issues, and then give them the tools and resources to solve those problems and help out their new friends that they've just you know, built a relationship with. So in this way, when you really think about why is it so important, well, this is really what we want from our students. We want them to be globally aware, competent citizens who are productive, who can problem solve, and who have empathy for one another. So when you think about that, just in a nutshell, a global collaboration really is so important. So let's talk about some ways that we can actually begin implementing this in our classroom. And so a lot of people, when they see global collaboration, they think, whoa, whoa, whoa pump the brakes. Uh, I, I don't know how comfortable I am just randomly bringing in a, another person or another classroom into my class using a digital tool. You know, I don't know anything about this other teacher or anything about this other classroom. You know, how will it all end up working? Well, if you're one of those teachers and you have a little bit of reluctance, which is 100% understandable, here's some great starter projects or ideas that you might keep in mind to kind of dip your toe in the water and get more comfortable with this idea of collaboration, maybe locally, maybe just another school in a neighboring district, maybe pairing up with one of your colleagues down the hall and having your groups of students do things together. So you notice here, each of these images links to a blog post or some sort of website that gives you an idea of how you can use these tools. But the first one is simply put a discussion board. You know, in college, all of us likely had to do some sort of discussion board on Canva or Blackboard or whatever LMS we were using. And now for the most part, our students, especially in middle school and high school, they have access to this tool as well. 
So not only is it building this soft skill of, of knowing how to react when they get an assignment like that in college, but they're also developing their skill and in interacting with their peers, um, working in a way that's responsible and kind, and then feeling confident in sharing their thoughts sort of on an open forum. And then that really plays right into the Flipgrid icon there. If you haven't used Flipgrid before, it's more so like a discussion board forum for, for videos and audio. And so once again, giving them that confidence to share their ideas, to post them for others to view and showcase all the things that they've learned. Even something as simple as allowing your students to be content creators and film short videos and then post them to YouTube for a wider audience to view. You know, in that way, you're not necessarily connecting with another class or doing the legwork of, of setting up some Skype chat or something like that, but you're empowering your students to create and then they can begin to see how others receive their work online. Another thing that many teachers have had great success with are classroom blogs or student blogging. And so when you think about that, you can do that in a nice controlled environment. Once again, teaching your students those digital citizens, uh, citizenship skills and giving them that ability to have a real authentic audience. And you don't have to go across the globe to do that. You know, you can have a classroom blog using a tool like EduBlogs, for example, that makes this totally safe, totally easy to set up and really impactful in your class. And then the last one, we have an icon there for a mystery Skype or a mystery hangout. So this is a really simple way if you do want to start connecting with another classroom, possibly in a different state, across the globe, whatever it might be, uh, this is a really great way to have your students discover where the other classroom is from. So there's sort of like an interchange of questions where they have to ask for clues and then they can use digital resources to predict where the other classroom they're interacting with is from. And it's a really cool game that has a lot of resources and lessons built behind it that you can use. So these are just some starter ideas. And these, for the most part, aren't really tool dependent. And really, whatever tools you have at your school, there's likely some ways that you could use some of these ideas. But if you are a little reluctant, this might be a great place to start. Now, if you're ready to dive in head first, the next four tools we're going to talk about are great ways to take your classroom outside of its four walls and begin breaking down those classroom walls and bringing in others from a global environment. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those. Now we are starting off with my absolute favorite. So I love pen pal schools. It is an easy sell if you are like a technology coach or a curriculum specialist. All of the titles of these tools are links to the website if you want to check it out further. But what pen pal schools is in short is sort of a, a new digital twist on maybe the classic pen pals that we might have had when we were in school. And so what it does is it connects students in over 144 countries to practice and build skill and explore the world. Now, this has received all sorts of accolades. It has great support. It's been recognized and has articles about it. And so if you haven't seen it yet, you know, this is an awesome tool. You can see the map's a little small, but all of those blue dots are different pen pal schools or classrooms who are using this tool. Uh, you can see just the vast uh, variety of people from all across the world who utilize it. And so what Pen Pal Schools does is it builds on these skills here. So typically, it identifies some big themes or some issues that our world is facing. It then empowers our students and gives them the context they need to understand more about it. So it gives them this, this worldly knowledge. It provides them with informational text that they can read. Typically, then they get a prompt that they respond to. Uh, they're developing digital literacy because they're watching videos and looking at guiding questions, responding back and forth on a discussion board. And then there's this whole social and emotional piece as well because they're being paired up with students who they've never met face to face. They could get paired up with a student who maybe is just learning to speak English for the first time and is kind of wading through as they type their responses. 
And so when they build those connections and they recognize that you know, this person may be totally different than me, they may be from all the way across the globe, it helps them to appreciate the experience and have empathy once again and just act really responsible in this digital environment. So a lot of good skills that they're building as they use this tool. Another great thing about Pen Pal Schools is that it's easy to use. So we talked about how this is an easy sell for technology coaches or curriculum specialists. Basically, you, you can use Pen Pal Schools in a few steps. Number one, as a teacher, you want to go and find some common core standard aligned topics. And there's tons of them, all about really popular, high interest topics, issues, um, different topics that are really maybe even some cases plaguing our society, our, our world today that our students want to solve. Once you find a topic that you like, you can then enroll your classroom to be a part of this topic and collaborate with everyone else who's already chosen it. And so then you get to this point, once you've enrolled your class, then you can begin having your students learn. And this is where they build that context that they learn about that background information. They share their perspectives with their pen pals who have also joined from other schools all across the globe. And they begin posting things to the discussion board and answering some of the questions that are posed. And in that way, they're building these soft skills as we mentioned before. Step three is where they actually publish their work and they receive this feedback from a global audience. And so that's really where the real power is. You know, before, if we wanted to have a pen pal, we'd have to handwrite our letter and, and put our address on it and our stamp and send it. And it was this really kind of long, drawn out process. But here, you can dynamically interact from students in different classrooms all at once, reading the same information, discussing the same information, and sharing your viewpoints in real time. And that is so powerful. And so the nice thing about it is, as you begin to use this more often and you become more comfortable with it, there is a teacher dashboard as well. And so you can assess student work, share it with parents, and connect with other educators from around the world who are also using this tool. So even on your end, remember we mentioned that for us as educators, we wanna be collaborators too. And it builds that in for us in such a nice, easy to use dashboard. Um, and, and this is something that you can recommend to any teacher who wants to begin connecting with others outside of their classroom. Now here's just a quick sample of what it looks like when you go to select the topic, you can narrow down the topics by age or by subject. And when you find one that you like, here is what it looks like. So as a former ELA teacher, I absolutely love the fact that there's leveled texts. You have a, a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced text that students who maybe need a lower reading level can take in the content at that level. And it is really self-paced for them in that way and helps them learn about this concept or this topic without it being too challenging or too overwhelming. And then of course you can see there's guiding questions, there's a video to watch, and then they have to respond to this question that helps demonstrate their knowledge or their learning. At the end, once they've built up all of this context and they've gone through all of these different modules, you know, kind of containing all of the background knowledge, then they get put into a project group with people who are not sitting next to them, with people from other classrooms, other schools, all around the world, and they collaborate together to create this project that highlights ways they can change or combat the issue they just learned about. And all of that is built right into Pen Pal Schools. So when you think about this tool and what it can do for you, you know, you don't have to be a social studies teacher, you don't have to be an ELA teacher to use this. There are all sorts of topics. It gets your students embedded in this project-based learning environment. And of course, as mentioned before, they're gonna be collaborating with people from all across the globe. So what a great way to liven up the learning in your classroom, have them easily connect with others, and then have an authentic audience for which they receive feedback 
and build their confidence as they continue to learn. So definitely one of my favorites. And if you haven't tried out Pen Pal Schools before, 100% recommend it. You'll love it. Now, the last question we typically get, and this is more of a parent piece, how are we keeping our kids safe? And with a lot of these tools, many teachers ask the same thing, right? If I'm collaborating with someone who I can't see, who I maybe don't know all that well, how are my students kept safe? Uh, what are the privacy and, and data concerns that I should know about? Pen Pal Schools, it has done a comprehensive job of keeping your students safe, of keeping our kids safe online. And so you can see some of the high points there. Only students invited by the teacher can join. Teachers in their dashboard can review every message that students send and receive. And students only provide their first name. So there's no last names, there's no email addresses. There's really no way outside of this environment for students to connect inadvertently and, and maybe create other problems. So if you're kind of a little leery about it because of that, just know that it has top line security in that way to make sure that this is only beneficial for our students and there's really no negatives with it. Now the next tool or resource that we wanna highlight is called the world's largest lesson. And you might think that that's maybe a bit of a hyperbole, but you'll see as we go into these resources that there is so much for you and your classroom to begin doing things that support global collaboration. So once again, I mentioned before, if you click that link, it will take you to the website that I'm gonna reference in a lot of these images. But once again, it's called World's Largest Lesson. And here is just a quick overview of what it's all about. So World's Largest Lesson is actually built on these sustainable development goals for children and young people uh, to unite them in action so that by the end of 2030, we end extreme poverty, we fight inequality and injustice, and we tackle climate change. It brings in free resources for educators to teach lessons and run projects that help stimulate action in support of these goals. And it has all sorts of great backing from all sorts of famous people all over the world. And ultimately what it's doing is helping your students gain awareness about these issues and then take action, real, tangible, impactful action. And so here's a quick overview of what it looks like if you're interested in maybe bringing some of these projects or some of these ideas into your classroom. So. Here are the different global goals for sustainable development. And as you can see, these are all great goals that all of us want. And we wanna be a part of you know, helping these come, to fruition, these come to fruition. Our students are the same way. So when we show them these different goals, they can choose one that they're passionate about. And you'd be amazed to see how students just take these goals and start running and coming up with new ideas and coming up with new projects and ways to make these things happen. Now, as a teacher, we want to know, well, how can I be supported in giving my students the resources they need to take action in this way? So the nice thing about the world's largest lesson is that it has all of these resources for us. Uh, there's an educator training course that we can take to prepare ourselves to use these lessons. There's all sorts of different posters and downloads and certificates that we can use to make this a fully comprehensive thing, um, something that our students are excited about. There's also a resource library through this tool and begin to use it and look at it. This was my favorite part because you can look through all the different lesson plans. There's animated films, there's comics and books. And then of course you have things kind of tailored to specific grade levels or specific age ranges as well. So depending upon what you're looking for, Really, you have all of these great resources right at your fingertips, and you can narrow them down based on exactly what you want. And then, of course, the best tab of all is the Student Action tab. So this is where they can create a change project. This is where they can speak up for their goals. Uh, they can pledge to be fearless and kind in support of the things they're doing. And there's a lot of 
uh, student action projects that are already uh, that have already been developed. But of course, if your students come up with something different, they can create their own project in support of these goals as well. And so think about how that empowers them, uh, the confidence that builds in them to find something that they're passionate about and then find a solution for it. I mean, that's the sort of students that, that we want to build, ones who are actively seeking ways to be better citizens and solve the problems that our world is facing. And here's just a quick taste of what it looks like as you begin to go through these resources. There's literally hundreds of different lesson plans that include smart goals and guiding questions and lesson materials. It even lets you know how much estimated time the lesson might take and, and what age range this is good for. With each of these different lessons, it also shows you which of the sustainable goals it links back to. So for example, you can see there's one lesson here about food waste. Now when you click into that particular lesson, here's just a taste of what it includes. So all of these things have already sort of been laid out for you as a teacher, and you can begin using these lessons and inspiring your students to really have an impactful global change just by looking through the resources on world's largest lesson. So if this is something that intrigues you, you're looking at this and you're saying, wow, this, this is really amazing. If you've had administrators or maybe your own principal say to you, you know, look for ways that you can incorporate some ideas to make change in our own community. Look for ways to get parents more involved. Look for ways to get business partners in the community more involved with what we're doing here in our school. These are real things that need to be solved likely in some of our communities right now. And when we give our students these resources and these tools, they will begin to make changes that you would have never expected. It will absolutely amaze you to look at some of the work that our students across the world have done. So feel free to check out World's Largest Lesson. We're really just scratching the surface with the things that we've showed you here today in this webinar. But I think if you look through it, you'll most certainly find something that links to the content or the curriculum that you're teaching in your class. And best of all, the student outcomes at the end, the ideas and the solutions they come up with, you will be amazed. Now our next tool is one that we're really affectionate about at Forward Edge because um, Classroom Bridges was actually uh, Katie's Google Innovator project and so this is kind of her baby and something that she's built and developed over time. And it's a really great tool if you just want to start connecting with other passionate educators around the world. So feel free to click the link and check it out. Here's just a quick overview of what Classroom Bridges allows you to do. Uh, she kind of affectionately says that it's almost like a, a dating site for classroom teachers who want to connect and then want to begin bringing their classrooms together. Um, doing either synchronous or asynchronous activities and projects. And so it's really, really easy to get started. It's really easy to make connections. This site is extremely teacher friendly and it's built to be quick and easy. So there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of fluff. You know, when you go in and you want to find a teacher that you're similar to, all you have to do is click get started. You fill up, uh, fill out a sign up page you find the classroom page and then you can begin filtering out by location, grade level, subject area. Uh, you can use a dynamic map to search for a certain part of the world where you might want to connect with the classroom. And then you can use the contact information that's been provided by those other teachers, whether it be email, uh, social media, whatever else they provide to then get in contact with them and develop a classroom connection where you can complete some sort of activity or project together. And so we mentioned how simple and easy it is, but it's really just one, two, three. So really the focus here is all of your time and energy should be spent on the actual project or product that both classrooms are going to collaborate together on and create. And here's just a quick look of, of some of the filters that you can use. And so you can see how granular you can make this by grade level, subject area, time zone, language spoken, utilizing the map, zooming in on different areas of the world to find classrooms that fit your need. 
And so in that way, you can do sort of all of the legwork up front and make sure the classroom you're connecting with is one that fits the curriculum, the content, and the goals that you, ha that you have for your collaboration efforts. So if you haven't seen Google, uh, sorry, if you haven't seen Classroom Bridges, or if you haven't even heard about it before, jump in, try it out, sign up, and connect with another teacher or classroom across the globe and begin utilizing some of the ideas that we've talked about earlier on in this webinar. Here are some sample activities if you maybe need that extra nudge or that extra help. So there are even some examples on classroom bridges of both asynchronous and synchronous activities that you can do. You know, we mentioned mystery hangouts or Skypes earlier. You can also do Pen Pals 2.0. You can exchange written or digital media. And so in this way, it's a great opportunity for your kids to kind of pinpoint who they might want to connect with around the globe and then do just that and begin creating great projects and products from that relationship and that connection that you've developed. Well, it's sad to say, but we've already come across our last tool that we're going to discuss during this webinar this afternoon. And so Flipgrid, if you haven't used it before, we mentioned it at the beginning of our webinar, just a great audio video based discussion tool that gives your students a voice. Uh, that's their entire mission at Flipgrid is to empower students and to embolden their voice. Now, the nice thing about Flipgrid is that it also has something in it called Grid Pals. Now, in a similar fashion, it's actually very similar to classroom bridges because what Grid Pals allows a teacher to do is first sign up for a Flipgrid account. So you're going to sign up for it like you normally would if you were just going to use it for your individual class and have just grids for your kids in your classroom. Now, once you sign up, though, you can use your Google login, your Microsoft login, whatever you want to do. But then you'll notice once you have your account, there's a new tab kind of at the top in that header called Grid Pals. And so what this allows you to do is connect with fellow Flipgrid educators and classrooms all around the world. And one of the keys is you want to make sure your profile is up to date with both the grade and the subject you teach, as well as any social media or email or any other contact information that you want to make available. And so once you update your profile, it's similar, as we mentioned before, to Classroom Bridges because now you get all of these other educators who also want to connect and you can find them using a dynamic map. You can filter out and then begin making this connection where both of your classes can then begin going back and forth on a flip grid, posting thoughtful responses, tackling big issues, taking in content and then showcasing their learning with others, receiving that authentic audience getting good feedback from people that they might not rub shoulders with in the hallways every day. You know, it could be from all around the world. So we mentioned that updating your profile is a really important piece to Flipgrid Grid Pals. So there's actually this Grid Pals adventure guide and it kind of walks you through how to make sure your bio is set up and ready to go, um, how to make sure you're including everything that would be pertinent so that you can connect with as many educators as possible. So any of these images on the slides that we're going through now, if you click these images, it'll take you to that Grid Pals guide on how to get started. And so it mentions a couple of practical things like going up to Grid Pals, going to your profile, um, telling your story, making it clear why you're on here, why you wanna connect, why this is so important to you. And then as we mentioned, once your profile is up to date, you can begin looking through all of the other teachers who have also joined Grid Pals. And so right now there's uh, over 7,500 active Grid Pal teachers who are looking to connect possibly with someone just like you who's doing great things in their classroom just like you are. And, and what a powerful way to use Flipgrid as the platform for that connection. And so we mentioned there's some other uh, useful parts to this guide as well. So once you've made the connection, once you found a teacher that you want to connect with, this explains how you can make that teacher a co-pilot 
on any of the grids that you create. So now both teachers can edit the grid, create topics, view video responses, and give feedback. So it's almost like now you're a co-teacher with someone who could be totally across the globe. Uh, their classroom could be totally different than yours, but you're able to come together in this shared space and really make learning alive, make it fun, make it interactive. And you'd be amazed to see how some of your more reluctant students, some of your more shy students, they just absolutely come out of their shell when they begin using Flipgrid. So this guide is really great. If you want to learn more how to set this up, how to use Grid Pals, I highly recommend that you check this out. And one of the nice things about it is it also talks about how we can incorporate some of the four C's. So this doesn't encompass all of the four C's, but as we begin to globally collaborate and make these connections and build these relationships, this guide also in, includes some tangible ideas on how you can use Flipgrid once you've made this connection on Grid Pals. So you can kind of do the where in the world, the mystery Skype or the mystery Hangout. Um, you can do a getting to know you introductory topic. You can spark conversation. You can do book talks. And then there's even ways that you can enhance collaboration even further. Um, having foreign language students or STEM. Um, and then, of course, in this way, it's giving you these tangible ideas that can really spice up the things you do on Flipgrid. And then lastly, we have ideas for both younger and older students. You know, one of my favorites is this one here on the picture to the left. If you've connected on Grid Pals and you're collaborating back and forth as a classroom, you know, asking each other, what are you doing to protect your environment? You know, how powerful it is to ask our students those really kind of deep questions to make them think about their impact and how their individual actions uh, have such a weight on things that are going on around them. So if you haven't checked out Flipgrid or Grid Pals in general, feel free to click on any of these links and you'll be amazed at how this can really take your classroom and the collaboration and the communication in it to the next level. And so we mentioned, you know, for time's sake, there's obviously other tools that, that we love and would love to feature. Um, those are some of our absolute favorites. But maybe if you're looking for some other ways to build empathy, to go on virtual field trips around the world, to raise the awareness of your students and help them appreciate what life is like outside of their school or outside of their world, you know, we always recommend Google Earth and all of the Voyager series that are there. Um, if you have access to Google Cardboards, Google Expeditions has all sorts of great learning experiences that are very globally um, kind of related. And then the Global Oneness Project as well, very similar to Pen Pal Schools or to the World's Largest Lesson, like giving our students the tools and resources they need to make a real impact in their community and collaborate with others. So to close things off, when you think about it, this picture really encompasses what this whole webinar is about. In the realest way possible, the world and the future of, of us humans, all the things that we love and do, it is in our students, in our children's hands. And we wanna make sure that they are globally aware, that they are good digital citizens, and that they have both the tools and resources to be empowered, to make impactful change, and to hopefully improve our society for the better. So hopefully there were some tools that you're interested in, and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to post those in the YouTube chat. Well, at this point, I'm gonna turn it back over to Katie so she can wrap things up. Thanks, Tyler, a lot of great tools there. Um, so we just want to leave you with a couple of things. I did post in the chat area a link to register for March um, or to be able to watch any of their recordings for any of our webinars there. So just a couple other uh, short announcements. Um, we have uh, sort of released our digital badging program to the world. So um, if you are interested in some of these tools and lots of other tools that you can use to transform your instruction, we have an anytime, anywhere micro-credentialing badge program called EDU. So teachers choose a tool, they learn it with the content we've developed, 
Every badge requires teachers to implement that tool into their classroom and submit evidence that they've implemented it into the classroom. And then they earn a badge, which is worth a certain number of points, uh, depending on how time consuming the badge is. Um, so then teachers can turn in those points at the end of the semester and year for CEUs or Ashland graduate credit. So that has been an excellent tool in the districts where we're using it already. Uh, so visit that website, forward-edge.net, forward slash edu badges, or shoot us an email if you'd like more information about that. In addition to our badging program, we also offer other Google trainings. Um, so a lot of these tools weren't necessarily Google-based. Some of them were. Um, but if you're interested, Google opens up a lot of opportunities and a lot of tools to make global collaboration possible uh, with their anytime, uh, anywhere access to all of their tools and with multiple editors uh, being able to edit in all of their drive applications at once makes it for perfect tools to use right along with these topics. So if you're interested in becoming a level one or level two educator, we have trainings to uh, get you ready for that as well. And so finally, don't forget, I already mentioned it, but don't forget to register for next uh, our next webinar, which is actually not next month because of Ohio's Educational Technology Conference. So we'll be there. We hope to see you too if you're in Ohio. Uh, but our next webinar will be in March, Inventiveness Across the Curriculum. Same time, same place. So register for that. And again, you can access all of our webinar recordings at that link as well. So if no one has any questions that they want to share in the chat, uh, that concludes today's webinar. Thank you so much, those of us who uh, joined us this evening. And for those of you who watch the recording later, uh, just reach out to us via social media or email if you have any questions that we can answer. Thanks, everybody, and make it a great rest of the week.